This is Your Morning Basket, where we help you bring truth, goodness, and beauty to your homeschool day. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 57 of the Your Morning Basket podcast. I'm Pam Barnhill, your host, and I am so happy that you're joining me here today. Well, every once in a while, we like to have a short and super practical episode of the Your Morning Basket podcast, where we kind of break open some practical aspect of morning time for you and maybe give you a few ideas. That's what we're hoping to do today. So often we hear from families who are traveling outside of the home one or more days a week for therapies, appointments, maybe they're headed off to co-op, or maybe even just a spontaneous opportunity arises to get out of the house. And yet they still want to be able to take their morning time on the go with them. So today I'm here with our community coordinator, Dawn Garrett, and we're talking about different ways you can pack up your morning time and take it on the road. I hope you find something valuable to you in this conversation, and we'll get on with it right after this word from our sponsor. This episode of the Your Morning Basket podcast is brought to you by Maestro Classics. Would you like to bring classical music into your children's lives? You can add classical music to your morning time today with Maestro Classics. These award-winning CDs and MP3s feature storytellers Yadu and Jim Weiss accompanied by the world-famous London Philharmonic Orchestra. Choose from a dozen titles including Peter and the Wolf, The Nutcracker, and one of the Barnhill family favorites, The Story of Swan Lake. What makes Maestro Classic CDs so special is that each CD and MP3 contains a 24-page activity book with illustrations, puzzles, games, and fun facts for kids. You can download free curriculum guides that combine classical music with science, math, geography, and other subjects. All CD and MP3 sets include tracks, which explain to your children how the music was made, who the composer was, the history and story behind the music, the instruments used by the orchestra, and most importantly, how to open your ears and really listen. Listening is a learned art, and Maestro Classics guarantees that these recordings will explain and develop listening skills in your children. Visit maestroclassics.com for free shipping on all CDs and MP3s. They start at just $9.98. As a Your Morning Basket listener, you can receive 17% off your order by using coupon code PAM at checkout. Go to www.maestroclassics.com. That's maestro, spelled M-A-E-S-T-R-O, classics.com, where the best classical music curriculum awaits your homeschool. And now, on with the podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Your Morning Basket podcast. I'm so happy that you're joining me here today. Today, I am joined by our community manager at PamBarnhill.com. Miss Dawn Garrett is on the show with us. Hi, Dawn. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great today. Thank you. Well, we are going to be talking today about morning time on the go. And we thought this would be a really fun conversation to have and give some ideas for families who need to be doing morning time in the car for whatever reason. Sometimes families like to do morning time on their way to a co-op. Other times families are just traveling and need to do morning time. And then we have a lot of families who have various therapies and appointments for their kids and they're, how do I fit this morning time thing in? And honestly, with even as few as 10 minutes in a car, you could get in a fairly decent little morning time. More's better, but you know, you can get in a fairly decent morning time. Very true. We live where it's 30 minutes to anywhere, so we can really do a pretty solid morning time in that amount of time. Yeah, I I think so too. Okay, so let's talk first about some of the benefits of doing morning time in the car. Because I think a lot of families, when they, when they first hear this idea, they're like, oh, why would, why would I even want to struggle with doing morning time in the car and just, you know, not do morning time instead? But there are actually benefits. So I'm going to let you like hit on the biggest one first. Oh, dear. The biggest one. The biggest one is that you get morning time done with children in contained seats. (laughs) (laughs) You have a captive audience. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. They aren't going anywhere. So they might as well do what it is that you want them to do. And 
I have a van. My three kids sit not right next to each other, which is a total blessing, I realize. And so they can't bother each other very much and they're contained and we can just do our thing as I'm driving down the road. Yeah. And uh, yeah, don't underestimate. Because <laughs> Actually, I looked up today during morning time. I was reading uh, from a little book for part of our faith studies. And I looked up and I'm like, two of the three children have just completely <laughs> walked out of the room. Where <laughs> in the world do you think it's okay for you to just get up and walk out in the middle of us doing school? <laughs> this never happens with morning time in the van. No, no. That would be very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. And now you do sometimes still have to deal with the noise and things like that. But also, as you know, in addition to the physical containment, there's also some, you know, it's almost like, well, there's nothing else to do to make this ride interesting. So right. we might yeah. as well participate and enjoy morning time too, and maybe be quiet while we do it. At least one of my kids gets very carsick when he tries to read. And so reading books in the car, which is what I chose to do when we were driving places when I was a kid, is not really good to to fill his time. And so, and the others, I don't know, they just, the, if there's something to squabble about, they're squabbling. But if there's morning time, there's not so much of the squabbling. Right. So it just, yeah, it gives you something to do that is constructive and kind of cuts down on some of the other stuff that could possibly be going on uh, right. while you're in the car. And it can be very, it can be mobile. And so if we can get at least part of our school day done while we're mobile, while we have to be out and about, um, it makes the rest of our day less difficult to finish. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It, it very much does. So let's talk about what can morning time look like uh, when you're doing it on the go with your family? So when you do it on the go, what does it look like? And then I'll talk a little bit about like what it looks like for us. Okay. Well, I pack, I have one of those big black teacher bags and I pack the notebook, my notebook and the things that we might need to access to into that bag and I hand it to my daughter and my van is old enough that I don't have Bluetooth on it. So mm -hmm. I have one of those really long auxiliary cords that goes from my radio to my phone and it reaches to the middle row, which is where my oldest sits. And I hand her my phone and I hand her my notebook and we mostly do memory work things or things that she can get the audio for very quickly. So we do those things as we're going down the road. Okay. Is that, is that the kind of thing you're asking for? Um, yeah, definitely. So you do your morning time in the car mostly from a playlist and the book is just guiding her on what to choose next or do, if you don't have an audio for it, but it's something that's in your current rotation, do you go ahead and have her just lead that from the notebook? She, she can lead it. And I wouldn't say necessarily it's from a playlist because we might have something from Amazon Music. We might have something from Audible. We might have something that's actually stored on the phone. It's, so she just knows she can say, okay, where's the poetry memorization and I can tell her okay it's here and and play it so she might have to work different apps but she's 13 she can manage that okay and I was actually going to ask how old is she and so about what age was she when she started being able to really kind of facilitate that for you oh probably nine or ten I would say Okay. Yeah, they get app savvy pretty young these days. <laughs> yeah. So. And and when she was younger, we did more straight out of the notebook and worried less about, you know, having the accompaniment or the the poetry. And, and she is a strong reader and always has been. So she could she could just read and read the poem and lead that as we were going. And mostly, you know, by the it's very rare that we have a brand new poem that we're going to start on a day trip. So right. it's mostly, this is the one we've been working on and this is a review poem. And so she can, she can obviously do both of those very well. Okay. Well, I'm, 
It's been a number of years since we've had to regularly do morning time on the go. So I would say the last time we we did it where I knew it was coming up and I knew it was something we were going to be doing was about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so when we were doing it, and it was typically one day a week, though, I will say once I had my setup planned out for that one day a week, if there was another day of the week, we jumped into the car, I would just, you know, I had it ready to go. But there was one day a week regularly that we were driving about 40 minutes each way. Mm. And so I actually went through and my kids were younger at the time. So I actually went through and and set up playlists where I took recorded bits of audio imported into iTunes and then built the playlist that I wanted to have. Now, a lot of times I would use these playlists at home as well. So I would, yeah, build the playlist that I wanted to have. And then, you know, like you, I, I didn't have a car at the time that had Bluetooth. And so we had the auxiliary cable. But once the playlist was set up, it was really easy for me to do that. You know, I would just hit the button on the playlist and it would just play all the way down. And then we would move to the next one when we were done. So that was what we used. And then we would have an audio book that we would have going just for the car. Right. And so it wasn't always used for morning time. It could actually be used even if we got in the car later in the afternoon and it's like not technically morning time, but it's just the car audio book. And, and so we would listen to it during our quote unquote morning time in the car, but we could also pull it up and listen to it later at another time of day as well. Right. We pretty much always have a car audio book going. Right. So, right. Right. And then prayers, you know, prayers are really easy to do. You either, either if you're doing some kind of uh, memorized prayer that you use, or if you're doing um, spontaneous prayer, that's really easy to do in the car as well. Right. As long as the driver doesn't close her eyes. Well, true. (laughs) (laughs) Very true. Let everybody else close their eyes and you keep yours open. (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) Okay. So let's talk about some of the really good things. And we've we've alluded to some of these, but let's kind of give more of a list rundown of various things that people could do in the car for morning time. So because, you know, like map drawing, probably not going to make the list. Our architecture study, not going to make the list. Right. No. So there there are some things that I think that just don't do well in the vehicle for morning time, though you could make an argument, well, you could take clipboards and everybody could take their pencil and work on their, their map if you wanted them to. But um, there are some things that are just better suited to morning time on the go. So yes. what are some ideas? Well, you we already said the IEW poetry or whatever your poetry memorization is, is a or really scripture. good one. Yeah. Or, or scripture. And scripture memory, singing, Folk songs are really good if you do a folk song in your morning time. Hymns? Hymns. We do a scene of Shakespeare every day, and we do it with the Archangel Mm -hmm. audios on the Audible app. So doing a scene of Shakespeare would be something we we could do see here a composer study would be really great because then you really have a captive audience and you could and and insist upon super quiet listening right right yeah very much easy to enjoy that one in the car any kind of well and we talked about poetry memorization but any kind of memory work as far as you know the car is a great time to go over skip counting if mm-hmm. you wanted to do that. Um, so any other kind of memory work that you might be doing? And uh, I know a lot of our CC families use flashcards. They actually have the little flashcard sets that come mm-hmm. with their memory work on them. So those would be great to hand to an older kid and have them kind of work their way through the flashcards as well. Right. We did geography songs for quite a while. The Song School Latin CD was a um, something that we would have done during when we were traveling for morning time, because that's when we did, we did song school Latin, just the songs. Aud- any kind of audio book, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, LibriVox has a great selection of classic audio books. Dawn's already alluded to the Shakespeare and then any, you know, book that you can get from Audible or anything like that uh, makes right. a wonderful addition to yeah. in, in the car morning time as well. Yeah, we're big LibriVox families or, or fans in our family. My husband has been listening for 
his commute for more than a decade. And some of the things he's listened to, he's so well read. So that is a wonderful resource to, you know, just have on at the tip of your fingers. And a lot of the LibriVox audios can be streamed through your podcast app. Did you know that? Uh, I did not. I knew there was a LibriVox app, but I didn't know that you could stream them through your podcast app. There are several different people who have put together LibriVox apps. They are not, it's my understanding that they are not actually from the LibriVox people. Oh. Um, so there's advertising and stuff on the other apps, but if you, you can stream them, if you, not all of them, you have to go into, if you go into your podcast app and search the title, sometimes you can find it. For instance, I just put Pilgrim's Progress in my podcast app to add for when we're doing our driving because we still um, listen to some audiobooks when we drive like we were talking about earlier and that's the other thing that we didn't mention in our list of things you can do in the car is podcasts that are specifically for kids yeah I was going to actually get to that <laughs> oh <laughs> so, sorry no that's okay no it's great uh, classics for kids is wonderful um, there's some great, fun science podcasts. Brains on notes. is one that we like. What do you, the Bird Notes have? app, where they have it's. I think it's on NPR, and um, they play the call of the bird, and then they talk some about the bird. Um, that's a really interesting one. I like it. Oh, that does sound cool. And what's the piano? Was that you or Jessica who was That's talking about Jessica? And I've looked at that a couple times. But we, you had there is a post with a lot of different podcasts that we that would fit really well in morning time on the site. Uh, okay, yeah. Think, so we'll link to that. I think that piano one is on that list, and I just don't know what it is. Yeah, there are a number of good podcasts in that in that post. So let's talk about. Does your morning time on the go have to look exactly the same? as your morning time at home. What do you think? No, I don't think so. Yeah. You're still you're still participating in true good beautiful things, right? And <laughs> yeah, I think it doesn't have to look exactly the same. I think if if trying to recreate what you're doing at home in the car becomes a hindrance to you getting morning time done, I think it would be perfectly fine to have kind of a mobile morning time mm -hmm. and just pull it out whenever you need it. And for some families, mm -hmm. that's going to be regularly, you know, mm -hmm. one, once a week or twice a week or something like that. And so it's going to be more of a fixture in their lives. But for other families, it might just be an occasional thing. And it would totally be okay to say, okay, well, you know, maybe once a month we end up in the car doing morning time. So that's poetry review day. We're just reviewing right. old poems. And so you make this playlist and maybe it's poems you learned last year. And yeah. it's just a great day to review all of them together. It doesn't get you off track or, um, you know, you could pull up some of the, uh, the Andrew Lang fairy book uh, stories. Mm -hmm. And it's like, th no, this is not what we've been reading lately. This is not what we normally read. But spending 15 minutes listening to one of these stories, you know, as an aside to our normal thing. It's perfectly okay. Yeah, I think we need to think about the situation of the day. I mean, even even at home, we may have an abbreviated morning time that's just kind of a standard, okay, we only have time to do our 30-minute or our half-time morning time today, and that's the one that you're going to get done. And then we have our regular full-on morning time and then maybe a mobile one that's separate. I think thinking situationally and not pushing our kids beyond or taxing them beyond, you know, what what the circumstances call for is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Yeah. And also moms as well. You know, right. it, you just kind of have this little plan B and you pull it out and use it on days that you might need a plan B, you know? Right. And with with that plan B, I mean, my morning time utilizes our phone a lot and I'm looking at it and moving stuff. And if I didn't have a Margaret in the back seat to to do the apps, I don't want to be doing apps while I'm driving down the road. Right. So. Right. So, yeah, yeah you, you may set something up that just kind of plays all the way through and that becomes, 
your mobile morning time no matter what. And all you have to do is hit the button once before you pull out of the driveway and it just kind of runs through and, and that's what you listen to. So yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. How do you decide if it's a good day for doing morning time on the go or if it would be better to just take the day off? If I can plan for it or not. If, okay. I, if, I, know, if I know the day is coming and I can get my things ready the day or the night before, then it's probably a good day. If I can, if I can have my notebook, my bag packed and I don't have to run around like a crazy person in the morning before we're leaving, trying to put everything together. If I can be settled and ready, then it's a good day to do morning time in the car. If, if I don't have all of that, if it's an emergent situation, um, if, you know, all of a sudden you need to go somewhere right now, that is not a good time to do morning time in the car. Okay. Well, unless, let's go back to this idea of plan B. You know, if you have that kind of, that mobile morning time plan already planned out and in place, it's your backup. Um, Then I would say any day would be a good day to do morning time in the car. Unless, of course, you know, you're driving a kid to emergent you know, urgent care because uh, they've cut their foot or something like that. <laughs> sure. Although in some ways being able to do that plan B morning time might be comforting. It takes That's your true. mind off of whatever the situation is. Um, and, and it's just, this is the normal routine. And sometimes just staying in routine helps to calm the crazy anyway. Yeah, that's true. All right, so let's talk about transporting stuff. So when we did morning time in the car, it was completely digital. There there was nothing we took with us. There was nothing that anybody looked at or read or anything like that. Now, you've alluded to your bag a couple of times. That's how you transport things? Mm -hmm. Although generally when we have done um, morning time on the go, it has been where we are going to go and some of us are going to be sitting in a lobby waiting for whatever the, you know, whatever the event is. And so they're bringing schoolwork anyway. So I have just that big black bag and I can put the schoolwork and the morning time binder and the things that we're going to need in the bag. It's all contained and then we don't lose anything. But Okay. And yeah. I, you know, if you were a family who regularly did morning time on the go, and this was something you were doing once a week, and let's say that was the only time you pulled out specific flashcards, um, or you wanted to make an extra binder, you know, a van yeah. binder when you're sitting, you know, making binders yeah. for your children or whatever, if you wanted to make a, a van binder, I could see having like a over the seat pocket, you know, one that kind of hangs on the back or something Absolutely. where you could tuck all of those things in there. I had a friend who that their school was all in milk crates, whether they were in the house or whether they needed to go somewhere. So they grabbed their whatever their schoolwork was and they put it in the trunk when they were leaving every day, no matter what. That would drive me crazy, but a lot of yeah. people find that. Re- <laughs> but a lot of fi- people find that reassuring that there's something to do. So you could easily have, you know, one of those upright magazine holders that has your morning time in the van, or like you said, the over the the seat pocket thing or I mean there are lots of ways to solve that yeah those tall file boxes that actually have a lid that close kind of like the plastic ones with a handle on top that would be perfect because notebooks and things would fit down in there Um, I mean you could even have you know if you wanted to label maps or whatever you could do little clipboards with uh, dry erase markers and all kinds. I mean, you could get really creative, uh, especially for our families who have told us, look, we're on the go three days a week. Right. And, you know, and so, and then it would be easy once you got to a doctor's office or something, if you wanted to, to pick up the handle on that and take it inside and actually right. be able to sit and work on something. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, we've already kind of touched on when you do morning time in the van and mom is driving, who leads and read aloud and uh, reads aloud. And for you, it was an older child or uh-huh. audio. And for me, it was mostly, um, mostly audio. So I think that pretty much answers that question. I, I think for moms of younger children, you're really going to have to uh, tap into that technology element and get that audio set up. Yeah, I think so, too. And 
my friends tell me that you can't buy a van without the video package these days, that it just doesn't exist. And so are there technology things that you can, I mean, could you be doing the, the what's the Latin, the visual Latin? Oh, yeah. In the car. Or could you, I mean, or could you have some sort of a documentary that you've done? Or the CNN 10 is all video. So if you've downloaded it to your device, can you broadcast that so you have the the day's news? So thinking about use, utilizing that video component also might be something that people could do. Yeah, and we looked at vans recently, and no, not all of them had the video. Component. Oh, well, that's good. that's good to know because I really don't want a video component. Yeah, you not that I'm still, in the market. Yeah, you can still get them without a video component, and they're cheaper that way too. <laughs> So, um, and it might actually be harder to hook a device up, you know, now if you have a a Mm. DVD, that would be easy to slip in. But yeah, so that is an idea. If you do have a van with a video component, you could review, um, you know, your Latin DVDs or um, we've been watching uh, Drive Through American History. That Mm. would be something that you could do or goodness, Word Up, the vocabulary show, Mm -hmm. different things like that you could utilize if you wanted to use your video component as well, if you, especially if you have younger kids, right. um, then let me, I'm trying to think now of shows for younger kids because <laughs> <laughs> all the ones we named were for older kids, but, uh, uh, Liberty's kids or, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Parm in San Diego. Yeah. Kids, those when they were yeah. little, they loved that. Yeah. And, uh, Frog, the letter factory, which that's a, like a one-time deal, but, my kids watched it a lot. Oh, yeah. Mine watched it over and over because, and I, I think it did reinforce those sounds. So, yeah. oh, and Magic School Bus. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. What about distractions and wandering attention spans? If you're trying to do morning time in a new place, um, like outside, or have you ever tried to do it like in a doctor's waiting room? Sort of. So, my son is in a Opt- optometry, uh, an eye study at Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so the girls and I would try to do some school things in the lobby there. But that's, you know, that's at a university. It's not really at a normal doctor's office. So it's quieter and there aren't other kids doing stuff. And and so it's it's much more it's easier, I think, than it would be in a like a pediatrician's office. I've never tried to do yeah something like that. I I could see doing quiet schoolwork in a in a doctor's office, you know, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. not necessarily something where I was leading people in memorization or singing hymns or anything like that. So I think <gasps> I would, I personally would keep the morning time on the go stuff in the van, and you know mm-hmm. have. Unless you do a lot things. of picture books, because picture books could be done quietly in a in an office setting. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Now, we have done morning time outside. Have you done that? Yes. My kids don't like that because I can't sing. And so we've, we've tried to do morning time in our yard. <laughs> <laughs> they put up with it in the house because they don't really have a choice. But we do, we have done morning time in our backyard sometimes. And they would much rather do independent work and reading and math and that kind of thing in the backyard than morning time. They'd rather do morning time inside. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So we, we have done morning time out front before and they got to draw on the sidewalk with sidewalk talk and it, it has varying degrees of success. Success. Yes. And then uh, we've done it on the trampoline before too, where they weren't jumping on the trampoline, but I let them draw uh, get the sidewalk chalk and draw on the on the trampoline, mm-hmm. and and that has worked okay. You know, we haven't done it recently because it's too hot outside right now um, when we're recording this. But um, you know, we used to do school on the back porch quite a bit, and then we got a puppy who ate our back porch furniture. So it's been a long <laughs> time since we've done that. But it was really nice when we were able to do it. And I think there is a, a heightened level of distractibility sometimes, but when you have really beautiful weather or something like that, sometimes it's worth the effort that it 
you know, to put into it, especially when you're doing something like drawing in a nature journal or, you know, you can listen to, you can, you know, hey, oh, did you hear that woodpecker? Or, or do you hear those bird sounds? And kind of bring their attention to some of those things. But, and just reminding them that if, if you can't pay attention, we're going to have to go back inside. Right. Yeah, I th- I can I can certainly see that. But yeah. We yeah. We haven't I think I've read about some people who go to a park and try and do morning time or I don't know, something else. We did school on the go last summer where, you know, a couple kids had had uh, swim lessons and one kid didn't at that time and then vice versa, you know, the opposite group would, had the swim lessons. And so they but they would do again their independent schoolwork, not morning time type type stuff. So Right. And I, I think yeah. there is a difference. Sometimes it's easier to keep them going with the uh, independent stuff than it is the group stuff. Right. So, okay. Do you think morning time on the go can be restful learning? Depends on the other drivers. <laughs> okay. So, can it be restful learning? Sure. I mean, if... If morning time in and of itself is a way of restful communal learning, of learning those beautiful things that we're doing, I'm not sure that the situation of where you are for it matters so much. But I guess I don't, I hadn't really ever thought about it as not being so. Sometimes I think morning time on the go can be more restful than morning time at home. Just because of the whole, uh, I, I think on the go is kind of a misnomer, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because at home, a lot of times it's it's more like morning time on the move or morning time in the gymnastics room or something like that. <laughs> you know, people are up and down and flipping around and not sitting still and spinning in the spinny chairs and yeah. you know, those kinds of things. And honestly you know, maybe we should get in the car to do morning time every day because in a lot of ways to me, it's more still because they are, you know, strapped in. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and if you, but it may also be at least partially because you're running morning time on the go as a playlist. So could you take some of the, of the, you're not, you're not running morning time right now when you're doing it in the car. You've set it up. You, you've you made it right. so that it could all happen. So what elements of that can you take into your schoolroom? Right. I'm just not sure I would want to, though, because I, I like what we do in our schoolroom. And to me, it's different. For, for us, I don't ever try to replicate what we're doing in the schoolroom. In the Mm. car. If you were to, if, you know, my husband were to come home and say, Pam, once a week, you have to be gone from the house, you know, so in my mind, I know, okay, I've got a 30 minute drive once a week and I've got to do morning time in the car. Mm -hmm. I would in, in no way try to keep up with the regular schedule. I would add another day to my morning time day loop, you know, because I'm looping days this year Mm -hmm. and I would set up that day as, as its own unique being and it would probably include some podcasts that we wouldn't listen to normally or are different, you know, uh, and then some review memory work. Like I wouldn't worry about current memory work. It would all be review memory work Mm. and, and different, you know, different prayers maybe than what we're normally doing or whatever. And I would set it all up and that would be what we would do in the car. So I don't think I would ever want to replace what we do at home with something like we would do in the car. For me, it's almost like a totally separate animal and I'm okay with that. That's good. Yeah. At this point, I would say it's also a different thing for me. We still have a 30 minute drive to to our church and then back home once a week. And we don't do morning time on those days. My kids are a little older and they can handle kind of the day off. And it's not I mean, it's kind of built into our routine. But also then built into the routine is we listen to two of our assigned books on audiobooks, one on the way there and one on the way home. So so in some ways we're doing we're still doing school because we're still doing that book, but it's not it's it's not stressing the rest of the routine. 
Right. So it's not. Yeah. So I, I think the biggest takeaway for listeners, guys, is, um, you know, if you know you're going to be and in. And it would be different for somebody who knew that they were going to be out three days a week. Then they would almost end up with two. They're either going to need to recreate the same schedule and use it in both places. Or Mm -hmm. they would end up with essentially two different morning times. Right. Yeah. And that's okay, too. I mean, um, I talk a lot about um, Angela Board when her two oldest kids were going to co-op classes two days a week. She basically had two morning time schedules she had one routine that she did when it was her whole family together and then she had another routine that she Mm. did when it was just her and her little kids and Mm. so you could have one routine that was a morning time on the go routine and one routine that was a morning time at home routine and it's a perfectly valid way to do it absolutely now when you were making your playlists for in your car did you always use the same playlist or did you have multiple different ones set up? So I would have part of the playlist was the same thing that we would use at home. Right. And then uh, the other part of the playlist would just be for in the car because it was almost like two different uh, loops. You know, Mm -hmm. we would do what we were doing at home as far as like memory work review and things like that. But then there would be a separate, subset of content that was maybe composers or stories or or different things of that nature that we weren't really doing that at home we were doing something different Mm -hmm. but when we were in the car we could then listen to those things instead okay so how how often did you feel like you needed to update your playlists well, the memory play w- playlist stayed the entire time. So just right. when I ran out, you know, when I ran out of stuff, like when we got to the end of listening to this book, it's like, okay, now it's time to add a new book in there or something like that. Okay. And so, um, and honestly, it kind of broke up into pieces. It would be like, okay, we're going to listen to memory work for a while. And then we're going to listen to, you know, a podcast. And then we're going to listen to part of an audio book. And so okay. I could have... You know, basically that's three apps and there were enough stops along the way that I could flip when I needed to. Okay. So, you know, just hit a button. Everything was pretty handy. So. Okay. All right. That um, makes sense. But yeah, I think the main thing for people to keep in mind is there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's totally okay to have separate routines and separate schedules going if that works for you. It's it's totally okay to have an occasional schedule going where you just have a few ideas and have them either in a notebook. I mean, you could even, once again, go back to keeping just a small selection of a couple of books, even a, a mm-hmm. poetry anthology um, would be a good book to keep in a car. If you had an older child, they could grab it and read a few poems. I'm trying to think, you know, a fairy story book would be another one. And so just by having even just a couple of books in there that a child could grab and read from and lead you during a morning time occasionally would work. And then you feel really good about your school day and you can kind of check off, check off school, even if you don't get to anything else that day, because you've had a a good robust morning time. Right. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think we've about covered most of it. That wraps it up. Um, Is there anything else you want to say before we go? I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think think, just about covered it. Yep. Just keep doing morning time and do, do what you can start small, build slow, do what you can. And I just, I've been more and more encouraged as I see older moms who are graduating out their kids that this has been, you know, fruitful, not only for their kids, but for themselves. Yeah. And some is better than none. And there's no such thing as a perfect morning time. So um, right. even when doing it on the go. Yep. All right. Thanks, Don. Thank you. And there you have it. Now, if you would like links to any of the books or resources that Don and I chatted about on this episode of the podcast, you can find them on the show notes. Those are at pambarnhill.com forward slash YMB57. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another great morning time conversation. Until then, keep seeking truth, goodness, and beauty in your homeschool day. Mm-hmm.